Okay, so in each of these problems, we're trying to identify um, if these shapes are congruent, which essentially means that they're equal, only that they're in different locations or orientations. Uh, in other words, you've taken a shape, it's the same shape, and you've moved it somewhere. That's, that means they're congruent. Um, if that's the case, we want to find the corresponding points. So we're, we have congruent shapes. The question is, where are the corresponding points? And that means where are the, the same points in each shape right? that are in the same relative position? So we'll work through these intuitively to find the appropriate spots. So if we have the first example of a parallelogram. And in a sense, the first parallelogram is pointing to the right. We have B here. I can imagine for myself that if I drew a line of reflection right here, what I would get is this shape on the right, which means that K and B correspond to each other. Right? You can almost imagine the shape has been flipped. And then that means that A and L correspond, and C and N correspond, and then D and M correspond. And for all of these, once you establish that line of reflection, just remember that if you draw a line from one corresponding point to the other, halfway in between is the line of reflection, and the line of reflection is perpendicular to the lines that you're drawing here. So you can establish to see that you found the correct corresponding points in a reflection by testing that fact, by testing to see if the line of reflection is halfway in between right, the distance of each corresponding pair. All right, up next we have two triangles. And here um, I'm going to assume they're about right triangles as a reference point, which means that this long diagonal side right here corresponds to this one here. All right, that's the starting point, and then that this short side corresponds to this point, this side right here, excuse me. So notice that E is the point where the short side and this long diagonal meet. So E corresponds to R, because R is also where the long side and the short side meet. So those are corresponding points. And then that means that P has to correspond to F, right? Because F's on the other side of the diagonal, and P is on the other side. And the only remaining point that corresponds are G and Q. All right, and the next one, oh, and by the way, this looks like it was some type of rotation, right? The shape was turned right, in some way to make it this shape right here. And we don't even need to get into the exact way it was turned. Um, in this one, right, this looks like an obtuse triangle, a nice large obtuse angle. And I have this, up across the obtuse angle is the longest side of the triangle. So these two sides correspond, right? And then we have these two other sides here. We have this green side between S and T, I'll draw it in green. And what I'm starting to think is, well, where does that fit here? Well, XZ is certainly the corresponding side. You can see that it's shorter than ZY. And ZY is longer than XZ, right? Just as TU is longer than ST. So we can color code to see which sides correspond. And then it's only a matter of realizing that, okay, this point T is between, you know, these, the ST and TU, or the teal and yellow side. So Z is the corresponding point. And then to the left of T, we have point S. To the left of Z, we have X. Right? Those, those are corresponding S and X. And then U and Y are the less corresponding pair. Um, and then for this shape right here, right, it might seem a little bit challenging, but what we have to realize is that we know that, we know that these shapes correspond. Right? So in some way, these things match up. And this one's actually been rotated around. And the way I know is, um, I, I, what I did at least, just to follow my intuition, is that this point B helped me out a lot. I knew that B corresponded to S, and you can kind of see it, right? B is the only point here on the shape that lies uh, between two sides that are relatively equal in length, and they, and they form this nice angle right here. I mean, yeah, E is between two size are relatively close in length, but the angle is much larger here, right, oh, much smaller here, excuse me, than it is here. There's a nice large angle at B, and I saw a nice large angle at S, which helps me match those two corresponding angles and corresponding points. So B corresponds to S, and you can see that the shape is kind of turned around. 
And we can also ask what about corresponding angles. Well, the exact points that correspond are also the corresponding angles. So as you go back through this, you can say, since point B corresponded to point S, the angle at point B corresponds to the angle at point S. Since point E corresponds to P, excuse me, since angle E corresponds to, to Q, angles E and Q correspond to each other. Since angle D corresponds to angle P, or since point D corresponds to point P, then angle, the angle at D corresponds to P, and so forth. So you can, you can identify corresponding points and angles uh, that match in each of these transformed shapes. All right, hope that helped.